Imbue is a worsted spun, worsted weight, five ply yarn. So four years ago, we reached out to a mill and said, we would love to make a yarn. It's gonna be multi-ply. We're gonna use Merino from Colorado. Scoured at Chargiers, which makes it into top, combed top, which is the appropriate preparation for a worsted spun yarn. And this particular yarn is special because the, the wool is dyed before it's spun. Often with worsted spun yarns, the yarn is made and then it's skein dyed. And with woolen spun yarns, you can stock dye the wool and then blend it and make it at the mill. But so this is kind of follows a little bit of a different process than a lot of worsted spun yarns. My name is Robert Littlewood. I go as Bob. I'm president of the company now. We've been in business since 1869, and I'm what we call the fifth and a half generation because I'm the younger of the fifth. And we are in Philadelphia in an offset of the city called Maniunk. And the customer will give us an order for a color. The machine would be loaded by hand and sealed for the dyeing process. After the dyeing process has been completed, we will take a sample out of the machine. That way it can be looked at to make sure the shade is matching the standard that the customer is requesting. So after the dyeing process is completed, then we have to take it to be dried to make it fluffy fiber again. The dryer line involves what we have called picker boxes. And these picker boxes will take sharp spikes and a combing action to open the fiber up to make it easier to dry and then ends up in our bale press where it is baled back up and ready to ship. Once we reached an agreement with Kramer, textiles in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Jared needed to go and spend time at the mill. Kramer has a really great situation where you can um, work with the color in this room and see pretty quickly how things look. And so Jared invested quite a bit of time over the course of a week looking at colors, developing different blends. So for example, we have solids. You start with solids, but this is almost like a recipe. It's, it's a certain percent of orange and yellow and brown, and, and so you end up with a puff like this. Um, and then it goes through the mill process, and this is actually the finished color. This is another one, terrarium, and this is the finished. So these are you know multiple colors in, in the wool. Well, my name is David Schmidt, Jr. I am fifth generation in the company. My official title is VP of Manufacturing. What I do here is anything that needs to be done. I'm usually the guy they call when the toilets are clogged. And that's not a joke. <laughs> so when the bales come back from stock dyeing at, at the dye house, we bring them all back over to our blending line. And now what we're gonna do is mix the colors according to whatever the magical color at the other end needs to be. When we bring the wool in and we receive it into the building, we take it over to our blending area where we open the bale. We have to pull it apart slightly by hand at the beginning. Once we've pulled it apart by hand, through the next step is as it's proceeding down the belt, what it's going to do is hit our picker which is really just a giant wheel with some pins on it that is spinning and literally we have one set of wheels holding the fiber and the other big wheel is just pulling it apart as it goes through without breaking too many of the fibers. We're really trying to keep the fibers in as pristine of a condition as we can. So it's very similar to that of like baking a cake of where we are taking these certain percentages of each color and putting them on the belt, um, so many per section and we mix those together according to whatever the recipe or the formula is for each one of those end colors. And as you can see by some of these, there are some 
interesting colors mixing together to make a very unique color at the other end. So the next step of after finishing blending is moving over to the card. The card, we are feeding the blended material into the back into our feeder. The feeder then is taking those colors and taking them, making sure they're still nice and loosely apart, feeding them over as it proceeds on the belt into the machine. The fibers all go from being in every direction known to man to through a process of rolls and hooks, the fibers are more and more organized into more and more parallel situations. Um, the easiest way to describe that is waking up with bedhead and hitting it with a brush for the first thing in the morning and making it not quite so bad. <laughs> so after it comes out of the card, what we do is we take it over to our auto leveler or servo, in, in, which is the first step in drawing, where what you're going to do is take the fibers, again, make them more and more parallel, make the fiber all in all more and more even all the way around. And then what we do in the first step is get it even. Second and third step, again, fibers more and more parallel, as well as getting it down to a thinner diameter to be ready to spin at the next step. As the fiber comes off of our finisher, we take it over to the spinning frame, we, th we throw it over the machine, and lace it down through a series of rolls. Those rolls are all moving at different speeds, and what they're doing is they're pulling the fiber more and more apart, and getting it down to the final diameter and weight that the yarn is gonna be. And then the difference in speed between the last roll it's hitting and the spindle down below is the twist ratio. And that is how we essentially take the sliver, add the twist to it right there at that step, and that's how we make some yarn. So at this phase for Brooklyn Tweed in our twisting department, we are specifically making a five ply for them. And it is a unique ply. We don't do a lot of five plying. And um, it makes a, a very nice worsted weight yarn. Finishing for imbue means that the yarn is washed and then twisted and labeled and packaged and ready to ship to us. That's not a service that's, that's offered at Kramer, so we sent it to Ultimate Textile. So it, it goes on a little bit of a, a route, but the, the results are well worth it. And I find, you know, seeing little uh, bits of, of the solid colors in the yarn is sort of the joy of knitting it for me because it's ever-changing. I can't wait for people to see it. <laughs>